Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fan, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David and I welcome you to your weekly dose of old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at what NBA legends have to say about Patrick Ewing, the great New York Knicks. And yeah, unfortunately, he's one of those players that even though he's in the top 75 and was in the top 50 players of all time, he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. So at least I want to give him a little bit of love in this video. But before we dive into that, let me ask you guys for a small favor. Please subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And I would say, let's get right down into it. Now the first player's opinion that I want to take a look at is from Grant Hill who obviously played for the Detroit Pistons in the mid 90s and had his battles against Patrick Ewing. Let's take a look. Patrick Ewing was one of my first heroes uh, in the game of basketball. I, I, I fell in love with basketball watching Patrick play in college and um, followed him religiously diehard Pat Ewing fan. That's why I wore the same number that he wore. Um, and then, of course, when he went to the league and went to the Knicks, all of a sudden the Knicks became relevant. The Knicks became exciting. Uh, one of the great joys for me in my career was to compete against Patrick. I remember the first time being on the court against him in the Garden, and I was just in awe. I'll always remember those games in the Garden, um, you know, just hearing the PA announcer when Patrick would score. Patrick Ewing! Patrick Ewing! And, uh, man, Still have nightmares about that. <laughs> and the next clip that I want to take a look at is a segment from NBA Open Court, my favorite NBA show of all time, which unfortunately is history. Anyway, let's take a look what they have to say about Patrick Ewing. Hakeem Olajuwon or Patrick Ewing? Well, first of all, I think Patrick Ewing is probably the most underrated of all the great centers because he didn't win the championship. Uh, but I will say this about him. He, that guy, he's a man. I agree with everyone here on the panel. I would go with Hakeem Olajuwon out of the two, but the guy that kept me up most nights because he was in our conference was Patrick Ewing. And not only because he was well coached under the Riley years, but you knew what you were getting defensively when the Knicks drafted Patrick. We knew he was going to protect the basket, but I think all of us would be a little bit shocked that he has over 25,000 points because he wasn't a scorer while he was at Georgetown. And the way he evolved offensively, yeah, he's not in the category of a Shaq or a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Hakeem Olajuwon, but you talk about one of the meanest guys to protect <laughs> the paint. Patrick Ewing was that guy. And you had so many memorable nights against that team. You talked about being in the same conference, but the Pacers and the Knicks, and it was you and it was Starks and it was Spike and it was Patrick Ewing. And uh, I, I imagine those matchups even ratchet up that that meanness and that intensity even more. But not only that, I don't think a lot of New Yorkers give Patrick yeah. Ewing the credit yeah. that he deserves. A lot of times he was the, the scapegoat, and it's unfair to him because this was one guy that brought 110% each and every night he took the floor. And yeah, he didn't win a championship, but it wasn't because of it, it was a lack of effort. And I, you know, you hear New Yorkers talk about Patrick and sometimes uh, the, the misfortune and not winning a championship I scratched my head because there's a lot of us on this panel because of the great Michael Jordan didn't win a lot of championships, and he just falls into that category. They just call him Beast, you know, Beast of the East. Like, whenever I call him Pat, he hated that. He was like, my name is Beast. So I think me calling him Beast all the time used to pump him, pump him up. And so, so that was his name on the court, he was Beast, Beast. Whenever you hear that, you know that's me calling him. You know, when I was coming up, my father always said, hey, I'm gonna make you like Bill Russell. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Wilt Chamberlain. And as a youngster, I used to practice all these old school moves. Old school moves, really old school moves. And then one day I was watching Patrick Ewing at Georgetown. Big guy, mean, physical, throwing people around, running the court. And I said, Dad, I want to be like that. He's like, I know, this is why I got you watching the game. So I'm watching Patrick Ewing, he wore number 33. So as I became better, 
I wanted to be like Patrick Ewing. He was the first guy that, when I played against him, I was actually intimidated. For their first pick, select Patrick Ewing. He killed you offensively, defensively. His presence just on the court. He was, quote unquote, the savior. He was the guy that was going to bring this thing back to, to where it once was. He had a lot of pressure on him to play for a championship. Patrick Ewing. You don't get the numbers unless you go and do it every night. Patrick was a worker. He was a warrior. We understood that he was our leader, and when you got a guy like that who puts it out there on the floor every single night, and you can't help but listen to him. He was the face of the franchise. He was an all-out warrior. We knew we could ride that horse all the way to the finish line. Patrick liked to work. As soon as he stepped on the court, he's going to be drenched with uh, sweat. A fierce competitor. We're always sweating and my game face is on. You know, I take the demeanor of this is this is my house. Now I'm gonna protect it. Free pressure. Oh, by Ewing. When you get a great center, I mean you got a chance. When Patrick came to the Knicks, now you got a chance to have a unique play. Can you tell can you just describe to me what it was like? when you could take someone into the post and you knew you were going to just demoralize them. It was great, you know, uh, being, be it a big player or a small player, whoever, if it was a small player, I'd be telling them, mouse in the house, give me the rock. Uh, if it's a big player, I'd either post him up or face him up and, you know, either fake, shoot my shot fake, drive around him or shoot my, my face up shot. I think that's, that's that, that was a great feeling. Uh, to me when I when I had it rolling. Um, you know, and you know, and sometimes I, 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 I watch guys warm up and they have they do a million moves. A million moves. And I'm I'm like and I tell them, I said, you know what? To me, what worked for me is I had my go-to move. Then when they try to take that away, I had a counter. So I, I, I you know, you don't need to have a work on a, a million moves. Just have something that you do and do uh, great and do it. And then when they try to take that away, you develop a counter to that move. And you could, uh, you know, have a long career. You were a great low post player. Right. But that 15 foot jumper was your money shot. Definitely, you know, I, I that was my go-to shot. You know, my turn around in the block or face up, you know, shoot the shot, face up, drive. Um, you know, those were my, my go-to moves. P.E. Crazy, Crazy P.E. A traditional center, young people, seven foot tall, can play face in the basket, can turn over both shoulders, can protect the rim, double figure rebounder, was a terrific star at Georgetown in college, was the face of the franchise of the New York Knicks for so very long. There are people walking the streets of New York City right now that have never seen the Knicks since Patrick Ewing played for them because really that was the last time they were good. <laughs> that just shows you how dominant he was in their uniform. Who's number that one then, guys? Who's number one guy? If you had to take one, eliminate everybody, so he's the number up. one Pat guy. Ewing. David got one. Every center got one but Pat. Ewing, Ewing over Charles. Charles is two. Pat, no, then yeah, I would go you, uh, Ewing then had I, better teams. Yeah, yeah. Ewing's team swept. Charles' Better teams classes. when he was in Philly. Yeah, yeah. The, the early Ewing teams would beat. Kenny, would you go Chuck Charles or Neek? You said Chuck two, Neek. And then Neek three, three for me. I think the difference is a lot of, a lot of bigs have bought, into, have bought into the fact that they, they have to be three-point shooters. And that's, that's what, to me, that's why it's changed. You know, with my mindset or mindset of myself, uh, Keem, David, you know, Shaq, we dominated, uh, you know, and... You know, I could have shoot, shot. I could have shot the three, but I, I know where my bread was buttered. We had other guys on the on my team that that could shoot the three better than me. So I got it done. I got my three the, the hard way. You know, I said in the beginning of the video already, Patrick Ewing is one of those guys who doesn't get the credit that he deserves, and it's pretty unfortunate. Mainly the reason is that he didn't win a championship, but to me that comparison is just so, not only false, it's unfair. How many great players did win against Michael Jordan? 
Barkley lost against Jordan, Karl Malone, John Stockton lost against Jordan. There are so many Hall of Famers and superstars who did not win against Michael Jordan. So it's pretty unfair to judge a player just by his championships. Anyway, Patrick, this video is for you. Love you, man. You were a great player and I got so much love for you, man. And for you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.